What if I told you that documenting your entire Power BI model, every measure, every column, every relationship could take you 30 seconds instead of 30 hours? That nightmare of manually copying measure definition, hunting through tables and building documentation spreadsheets, it's over. Let me show you how one DAX changes everything. So if you're interested, keep watching. Let's talk about how we used to document Power BI models. In the traditional approach, we would manually list every table and column, copy and paste measure definition one by one, document relationships by taking screenshots, create separate Excel files or Word documents, update everything manually whenever something changes. Now, what's the problem with that? It's time consuming, hours or even days for complex model. It's error prone, easy to miss measures or columns and it gets outdated very easily. The moment you change something in the model, your documentation is wrong. And apart from these, the documentation is not searchable or dynamic because you're using screenshots and it requires constant maintenance. Sounds familiar? I thought so. Now to counter this, Microsoft introduced a series of info functions in Power BI that completely revolutionize this process. Think of these as metadata functions. They let you query information about your model from within your model. The four info functions Microsoft introduced are info.view.tables, which returns all tables in your model, info.view columns, which returns all columns with their properties, info.view.measures, which returns all measures with their DAX definition, and then info.view.relationships, which returns all relationships. With just these four functions, you get complete visibility into your model structure. These functions returns table of metadata that you can use just like any other data in Power BI. And here's the magic. They update automatically whenever your model changes. With just these four functions, you can document everything that matters in your Power BI model. Now let me show you how ridiculously easy this is to document. So here I have opened up a previous project that we did on Power BI and in case you have not checked this one out, this is a really nice sales segmentation RFM analysis project and I'll leave the link in the description in case you want to check it out. Now in this project we have a couple of tables here. So mainly we have a superstore data here with few measures and calculated columns. We also have a couple of dynamic tables that we created and then we have a dedicated measures table, which contains a lot of measures here, right? And I want a simple way to kind of document all of this quickly. Let's start with documenting all the tables that we have in our data model or in this entire project. So what you have to do is go to this table view here. And then within this, inside the table tools section, you will find a option to create a new table using DAX expression. So whatever output the info dot view DAX create, it's in a table format, okay? So I'm gonna click on this new table here. And in the formula bar, I'm gonna enter, let's say doc underscore table. And let's just create that DAX now. I'm gonna write info dot view. And if you notice here, IntelliSense is suggesting four DAX functions. We're going to select this view.tables and commit to this DAX function. And that is it. What it has done is it has listed down all the tables that we have in our data model. Now, if you see, we have a couple of columns. Some of them are relevant for a user. Some of them are system specific columns. Like for example, this model column, you might not be using this but we have a name column, which is very relevant. We also have a description column. Right now it's blank and I'm gonna show you how to fill this up. The is hidden column, which tells you whether that table is hidden from view or not. The storage mode, which tells you whether it's a import mode or a direct query mode. The expression column, which tells you all the expressions which are used to create a dynamic table. We also have a calculation group, 
column. Again, this will be relevant if you have created a calculation group. For this case, it's empty, which is perfectly fine. Now let's move on to the next category of info.view DAX function. I'm going to create a new table again. I'm going to call this doc underscore measures and I'm going to write info dot view dot measures. And as the name implies, what it does is it lists down all the measures which are there in your data model. And this is particularly very useful because you now have a table containing every measure in your model, including the table it belongs to, the full DAX description, the description and more, right? Now let's look at the next function in this category. So again, new table, I'm going to call this one doc underscore columns and info dot view columns. And as the name implies, it has listed down all the columns in all the tables in your data model, along with all relevant information that you might ever need for documenting your data model. Like for example, we have the name and the table itself, but then we also have the data type for that column. We can also tell if that column is unique or not. And then it also tells us whether any particular formatting is applied on that column. Now the final one is really cool. I'm going to click on this new table and this time I'm going to call this doc underscore relationship. And now again, let's write info dot view. And this time we'll use relationships. And what this has done is it is actually summarizing all the relationships that you have built in your data model. So if you go to this model view, whatever you've created in terms of relationship here, it is simply documenting everything. Now, if you notice in this, it's showing a table called local date table, which is not there in our model anywhere. This is because this local date table is auto generated by Power BI whenever you selected a data type as date time, right? So you can ignore this for now. What you can look at is that in the second row, it says order date, and then there's an asterisk sign, which means many. And then there's an arrow going towards order date. And then after the arrow, there's a one, which means the table has unique values. And if this is a one to many relationship between the date column of the date table, right? So it shows you the relationship and what kind of relationship and the cardinality of that relationship. And if you go at the third row here, it's saying customer ID, which is a many relationship. And then we have a relationship between customer ID of the RFM calculation, which is a unique list. And it is having a both directional relationship because it's showing arrow towards customer ID in Superstore and customer ID in RFM calculation as well. So this is how you can document the relationships as well. And we have a complete view of how your tables are connected together. Now here's where it gets really powerful. You can create a dedicated documentation page in your report itself. So I'm going to click on this new page. Let's insert a text box and I'm going to call this documentation. And then you can add in the new tables that you created in a grid visual. So let's say from the doc measures, I'm going to choose name and expression. And then you can also choose description, but right now the description is empty. Now let's see how you can fill up a description for your columns, your measures or anything else, right? Come to the modeling view here. And let's say I'm selecting this table measure and within this, I'm going to select a single measure here, average frequency. Now, if you see in the properties panel here, there's a section called description. Now, if I add something here, and go back to my view here and refresh. This will load up the new description that you just added. And in case you don't want to type it and you have Copilot available within Power BI, then you can easily generate the description as well using Copilot by clicking on this button. Now, why would you want to do this? By creating a dedicated documentation page, it gives you a searchable list of all measures with their formulas all columns grouped by table, a visual representation of relationships and description and data types of anything that you want in the data model. 
You can format it beautifully, add search functionality, create bookmarks for different sections and treat it like any other report page. Now, in case you want to make it a bit more fancy, you can club all these different categories of InfoView DAX functions into one, right? So for example, if you go to the table itself, you have your name column in all of them, right? You also have the description column, which is common. And then you also have the expression column, which is common, right? So you can use these columns to create one DAX function, which clubs everything together and gives you one single table for columns, tables, measures, and relationships. And this is how you do it. I'm going to click on this new table and let's call this complete model doc. I'm going to use a union function here and let's call the select columns function. And in this, I'm going to say info dot view dot columns. And then let's type in the column that we would require. I want the name as type and in the expression, I'm going to write measures here. Second column, I'm going to say name and the expression would be the name column that we have in that info dot view columns. Then let's take tables, which gives us the table name where that particular column exists. Then let's go with description. And finally, I'm going to choose expression. I'm going to close the bracket here, write another select column function. This time I'm going to choose info dot view dot measures. And sorry, I made a mistake here. Instead of measures here, let's do columns and repeat the same process again. So I'm going to copy paste, but instead of columns here, I'm going to say measures, copy this two more times and let's change the value here to info dot tables. Call this table. We can keep this one as blank here because this is a table, right? And then the last one, choose relationships. Call this relationship. In the name section here, let's use relationships because in the relationship table, the names are slightly different. The table would be blank here. Again, description will also be blank. And expression is again relationship. And now if you see, it has created one single table called complete model doc. And within this, we have different categories of items. Like in the type section, you have columns, measures, relationship and tables. This is happening because we deliberately created these separate type column here, right? These are text, but this gives us a distinct bifurcation of columns, which we can later on filter out. Then we have the name. This tells us the name of the column table or any other category of items that we have. This gives us the location of that particular item. So if it's a table that will be blank or if it's a relationship, it will be blank else. It will give us the actual table location of that particular column or measure. Then again, as the name indicates, it gives us a description and expression. Now you can easily use this table in your documentation page and document everything in one single grid. Now, let me tell you why this is a game changer in real scenarios. Now for development teams, new team member can instantly understand the model by browsing the documentation page. So no more, what does this measure do questions for audit and compliance need to show what calculation you're using. So export the measure table to Excel and you're done in seconds. So you can just click on this and, you know, click on export data and that's it for version control. You can track changes over time by keeping a record of these documentation. So you can keep on exporting this grid into an Excel file and keep that as a version control. So you can see exactly what measures were added, modified or removed. For large models, when you have 200 plus measures across dozens of tables, manual documentation is impossible. So info.view makes it trivial. And for handoffs, when you're leaving a project, your documentation is built in and automatically completed. So you don't have to spend any further time on documentation. And there you have it. Documentation that takes 30 seconds to set up and maintain itself forever. No more hours of manual work, no more outdated docs. 
the info.view functions are one of those quiet features that Microsoft added without much fanfare, but they are absolutely transformative for anyone serious about Power BI development. If you found this helpful, then hit that like button and subscribe to the channel so that you do not miss any content that I upload. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.